Hey everyone, I'm Michaela Bornett, Junior Portfolio Manager at Harbor Capital, and I'm here to talk to you guys about inflation. I, for one, had a great summer. Picnics, going to the beach, lower than expected CPI prints. I couldn't ask for much more. And while it's easy to look at yesterday's print and think, oh, all of that is gone, the internals of the CPI print were actually pretty favorable. While both headline and core CPI re-accelerated on a month-over-month -month basis, the main themes that drove the bulk of the disinflation so far remain intact. Starting with headline inflation, higher energy prices were really steering the ship. Gasoline prices were up roughly 10% last month, and I know we all felt that at the pump. But since peaking in August, gas prices have been virtually flat. And people generally won't consider this a game changer for inflation, because the Fed knows that there's going to be fluctuation in commodity prices that they just can't control. Generally speaking, they're not going to be too worried about them unless these fluctuations lead to a bleed through into higher goods prices or inflation expectations start to become unanchored. And with good prices disinflating for the third consecutive month and inflation expectations remaining well anchored, there isn't much cause for concern right now. If that changes like it did in 2022, that's where the Fed will become more concerned about headline inflation. But for now, they're going to be okay with riding the wave. Turning to core inflation, which is what everybody is going to be more focused on, transportation services really have led the increase there. We did see a little bit of bleed through from energy prices onto airfares, but we think this is going to be short lived. And the reason for that is because airline companies have started to give their third quarter guidance. A lot of them are highlighting an increase in promotional sales to combat waning demand. So we think that these promotional sales are going to prevent sustained increases in airfares. The other contributor to higher core CPI was auto insurance premiums. That category, which is about 3% of CPI, has been persistently high for the past six months. And we actually haven't seen it peak yet. And the reason for that is because it's lagged with used car prices. So for example, if you total your vehicle, the cost of replacing that totaled vehicle becomes higher as used car prices increase. So the insurance companies need to recuperate the higher loss rates with higher premiums. And all of this happens with a lag. So moral of the story is, we should start to see auto insurance premiums normalize in the coming months. We just haven't seen it happen yet. Overall, we're not getting too jittery about August CPI print. We're still seeing a steady loosening in the labor market, which should slowly bring down services inflation. But of course, we need to stay attuned to the risks that higher economic growth poses to inflation. Our course of action right now is to holistically digest incoming data, monitor how the Fed is digesting that data, and stay nimble on in our inflation outlook. That's all for today. I'll see you guys soon.